Hey guys, Bugcat7 here. Okay, it is Wednesday, April 22nd, 2020, and I want to thank you for visiting the Stonewall Research Channel here on YouTube. Thank you very much. I really do appreciate it. All right, guys. Well, we have to get back to the main focus of my channel, which is the stone walls of New York and New England. But I often say that, but it encompasses part of Canada, Pennsylvania, Ohio, Indiana, Illinois, Wisconsin, Michigan. I mean, this is all inclusive in this site. And if you didn't know, and it's because we have this uh, sort of mainstream bias who's largely ignored it and under-researched this area because in the minds of the mainstream, it's all settled. The colonists and settlers built all the walls and it's, that's just as simple as that. And there is no sort of uh, gray areas in there these people it's simply black and white thinking it's either all or nothing for them whereas the people on my side of the argument don't say any such thing we acknowledge that the settlers and colonists did, did build some of the stone walls but they did not build the majority of them and I'm here and other people are here to dispel that notion because it's incorrect. And despite what Michael Tellinger says and megalithomania or anybody else that deals with archaeology and anthropology, there is no other place on this planet where a more intense effort was done in a short period of time to construct something so immense that it's beyond belief. And I'd like to read a mainstream article to you and um, in that you have one of the um, one of the vanguard of the mainstream, Susan Allport, uh, makes a comment that I like very much. And just to illustrate the scope of the building of this site and what this site represents. So let me read the article for you. It's a pretty good one as far as mainstream goes, but we're going to talk about it afterwards anyway. But let's let's take a look at this thing. It's called the Field Notebook. This site here, and it's an article about somebody from you know somebody from the New England area wrote the article in 2006. But I think it illustrates my point if you can ignore the fact that uh, the mainstream here seems to insist that all of these things were built by colonists and settlers. But let's talk about that later. Let me read the article to you. The Walls of New England, a Forgotten Wonder of the World. Make a list of our monuments to the dead. Start small with the headstones in a village cemetery and move to statues in a public square and civic buildings with great names affixed above the door. Then add the obelisks and marble mausoleums and rushmores and pyramids of presidents and kings. It is an impressive list, yet it is dwarfed by monuments we see every day that stand in testament to one of the most heroic and backbreaking construction efforts in history. New England stone walls. And as I said, it's not only New England. New York is not considered New England, but it really is. There's no difference in it. Vermont was part of New York at one time. So in any case, let's read on here because that is exactly correct. In November, after the curtain of leaves has been drawn from the woodlands, we once again see the old stone walls tracing the boundaries of lives lived long ago when our forests were pastures and fields of our ancestors. And again, just ignore that, but let's go on. The walls stand pretty much as they stood 250 years ago when they were built to specifications defined by property rights and the wanderlust of livestock. And what a construction project it was. No one has taken a recent inventory of these colonial stone walls built but in 
1939, a mining engineer using historical data from the U.S. Department of Agriculture estimate that there are 240,000 miles of stone walls in New England, which would stretch nearly 10 times around the Earth's equator or all the way to the moon at its closest approach. That is if the walls were all in a straight line, but as we know, there is no such thing as a straight line in New England, which is not true. In 1871, the U.S. Department of Agriculture reported on the statistics of fences in the United States. Susan Allport's classic history of stone walls in New England and New York Sermons in Stone, notes that at the time of that federal fence survey, New England and New York State had more miles of stone wall than the United States has miles of railroad track today, which Harry Hubbard had mentioned to me, more miles than railway line that we have in the entire country. Ms. Allport also offers this incredible calculation Quote, the work that went into them, according to one estimate, would have built the pyramids of Egypt 100 times over, unquote. You can often tell whether a particular wall was created to enclose pasture land or crop land by looking at the stones in it. The walls that merely mark boundaries or enclose livestock were often made of stones uniform in size, reflecting the selective preference of the person building the wall. Stones that did not satisfy that preference were left behind in the field, which is nonsense. The stone walls built at the edges of cultivated fields, however, often have greater variety of stone sizes from full-fledged boulders to smaller stones dragged up from the soil indiscriminately by the plow. All the stones, regardless of size, were cleared from the field so the plow would not have con to contend with them the following season. New England soil is constantly in motion, however, and a new crop of stones is fetched up each spring thanks to the perpetual cycle of freeze and thaw at this latitude. The stones are the calling cards left behind 13,000 years ago by the mother of all thaws, the melting Laurentian ice sheet, which dropped a load of granite and scraped off the mountaintops in Vermont and New Hampshire that was headed for the terminal moraines of Cape Cod and Long Island. This is all nonsense, by the way. I hate to tell anybody who's stuck with the mainstream. We have many evidences of all sorts of types of stones involved, especially in Jimmy's property there in uh, Vermont. Stone walls are now as much a part of New England's identity as the Green Mountains, the White Mountains, or Cape Cod. They have settled into the landscape and seem as natural and organic a part of the scenery as the hills themselves. The walls are truly monuments to the grit and tenacity of their builders, long dead and now forgotten, who follow the simple, simple formula of dry stone masonry day in, day out, year in, year out. One stone over two, two stones over one, stone by stone, they built one of the great wonders of the world, which is almost a direct quote from, quote from Dr. Robert Thorson, who is a charlatan, okay? He doesn't know what he's talking about. Centuries pass, generations pass, and most of the hubbub associated with human life rises up and falls down over and over again. Yet, employing only gravity and friction, the stone walls of New England still stand as monuments to their builders. That's right. The builders who lived thousands and thousands of years ago who built them. Let's look at some of the responses. There's 34 responses, but I want to read some of them that are in here because apparently many people disagree with this contention of theirs, the mainstream vanguard, people like Susan Allport, Dr. Robert Thorson, um, Dr. Ken Fader, and other people who have suggested that they were all built by the colonists and settlers. So let's look at some of the comments here because they're very interesting. But I like to talk about him. Okay. I like this one by Kevin Mack here. It's made in 2014. Have you lost your mind? 
These stone walls are thousands of years old. They were not built by colonial Americans. They were here long before the white settlers were here, and the Indians did not build them either. I have lived in Vermont all my life and have seen many, many odd stone structures. These walls and other standing stones and stone buildings were built by some ancient race. For what purpose, I do not know. Okay? Let's take a look at some more here. I've Googled this subject arduously for the last couple of days and cannot find a definitive or agreed upon explanation of how they were built. I can imagine how farmers 200, 400 years ago cleared the land of stones with the help of oxen. But how did they place the stone on the walls, in particular huge stones the size of large rubber bouncy ball? How, how without machinery could a rock that size be lifted up on top of other stones already placed there? on the wall. We've conjectured block and tackle tripods, even such a tool as a tray bow bouets in modified form, which is, are all plausible. But does anybody know how they were actually built? There has to be lore passed down from those times. And I'm passing up the standard answers because I've heard enough of that to choke a, a blue whale. Okay, this is an interesting one by Peter Jorgensen. If you calculate the number of hours it would take to build all of the stone structures, walls, cans, etc. in New England by hand and draft animal power alone, you so realize that these stone structures were not all or even mostly built by Western European settlers. In addition, there is little or no record in journals or other records of that period describing the building of stone walls, which is absolutely true. Here's one here by Rob Wilson. Wake up, people. Having studied many of these stone walls for years in Connecticut and Rhode Island, I personally believe these walls were not built by either the colonials nor by the natives living in these areas. There are no historical rector, records from colonials or other than their other than, than their questioning who may have built said walls, and natives when questions by questioned by colonials, had no idea who built the walls and surmised walls were built by gods. Without any serious scientific investigation into historical documentation and geological and analysts, any theory on their actual construction time period or who built the walls is only theory, not science, and not worth spewing forth as fact. And here's one by somebody you might know. There I am, David A. C. Let's meet by Cat Seven, Stonewall Research. We must be on guard for romanticized false histories without documented attribution. The current research suggests that these stone walls were assembled by an ancient culture. The evidence given to attribute these to colonialists or settlers is flimsy. Okay. Let's read a couple of others here. AJ says, at least 90% of these are pre-Columbian and not built by Native American. If built in colonial times, they would need to average two feet per second for 250 plus years. These are thousands of years old. And I go through this on my debunking of the mainstream history. I haven't seen the series and why it doesn't have thousands of views and I'm not like Egypt and Turkey and other places in the world is a mystery to me because this place is no less interesting and filled with all sorts of not only stone constructions and stoneworks but earthworks, earthen pyramids as we all know, stone pyramids, cairns, effigies, um, chambers, etc, etc. It's my opinion that None of the stone chambers were built by any of the colonialists or settlers, so. Let's hear what other people have to say. Okay, this guy has an interesting... I'm an avid mountain biker and I've biked about 5,000 miles through the woods of New England over the last 20 years. I never gave much thought to the stone walls. There's why many people haven't given much thought to it because... 
they're satisfied with uh, the pat answer from ancient just left over from farming susan Allpart's article hit me like a stone wall there are so many i see them cross on the rails built in 1870 dip into swamps and come out the other side climb crazy steep hills no one would farm common 30-foot roadways strange parallels on hills like some defensive line the larger boulders are just barely jutting from the ground but are definitely arranged by man I see quartz walls in areas with very little quartz and odd limestone that looks like cement with rounded brook type stones you can find that in Jimmy's property the stones have no tool marks I looked at thousands camp next to walls and found none many do look cut the more i look at the walls the more questions it raises somebody should really do a serious study of the walls thorson's work just doesn't answer the question of how the labor was completed in such a short time in middletown connecticut at wadsworth manor they recreated a 30 foot wide road that was already there so we have a good idea of what the roads look like there is still remnants of the original 30 foot wide road mostly just scattered rocks now the walls are most common in the areas not disturbed by modernization and are denser near waterways as I've always said on my channel. I also see common melted stone on the exposed surfaces like the wall was subjected to incredible heat on the exterior, which I find very interesting. I don't think I will find the answer to this mystery in my lifetime, but it's a very interesting topic. Come to my channel, buddy. You'll find out more about it. And all of you are. I highly recommend you watch my videos on the stone walls because I've come to some revelations on my own in my own research that no one has come about and they're solid and they have evidence I present evidence as much so please look at them I agree with Peter Jorgensen the population of the whole USA was less than 40 million people of which 20 million people were men of which 10 million were in the 15 to 45 age group there are 290,000 miles of stone walls in the Northeast so 290 times 5280 one Billion five hundred thirty one million two hundred thousand feet. That is one billion five hundred thirty one million two hundred thousand feet. I assume farm could build two hundred foot a day. That is seven million six hundred fifty six thousand man days or twenty thousand nine hundred seventy man years to build the walls, which leaves little time to build or produce anything else. If you examine the walls, you will find them in places never farmed or used for passage, with no entry or exit openings running parallel 25 feet apart and running up the sides of cliff and walking very straight. Okay. So here's somebody recommending the Native Americans because the Native Americans, their ancestors, whoever these people are, a large hominids are the ones who built them. Okay, so many people here are questioning the validity of it. I can't get into everything of my points on it and my research on it, but out of the many, many people who are the vanguard of looking at the stone walls, okay, I'm at the apex of it, along with people like Matt Adams from Northeast Historical Stone, Stone Sites and Investigation and Explorations Group. If you haven't seen any of this stuff on Matt's channel, Matt just came out with a book about it, okay? Field Guide to Stone Features of the Northeast United States. He'll be publishing this real soon, okay? So if you want to find out more about these things, here many people post these amazing things. He's a copper implement found by somebody, okay? And also Tim McSweeney of, um, hmm, I don't have that here. Hold on a second, I'll get it. That's celebrating the ceremonial uh, landscapes of New England, okay? Both these guys, although we might not agree on every single point, these guys have a lot of respect for my research and the things that I pointed out about my research on the wall. So please do check out these Facebook pages because people post the most incredible things. And just to give you an idea of the extent, okay, here is the New Hampshire Stonewall Mapper, okay, 
And again, I'm not going to get into all my reasons. I just highly suggest that you look into my videos on debunking the mainstream history on these. Every state around us, here's where Jimmy is in Springfield, okay? Jimmy's another one at the vanguard of this research, okay? It's not only Matt Adams, Tim McSweeney, okay? These are two pretty important guys, and I consider myself one of them. You also have Jimmy the Paleo Mountain Man. You have people like Dennis D, North Country Relics, Bill, uh, Brian Gilliotti. I mean, all of these people are hands-on researchers in the field, just as myself. So, I mean, if you haven't seen any of my videos, you're going to be amazed by them when you do see them because this is an incredible sight, guys. And this is an under-researched, largely ignored site by mainstream. And I can only think there's a reason for that. Okay? All these little pink places represent stone walls. Okay? And just as the person said in the article there, I go this in my debunking of the mainstream history on the stone walls. I get into the logistics and the demographics. Okay? Only 20% of any given population would be capable of building the stone walls. And out of that 20%, only a percentage of them were farming. And by the way, the mountainous areas of anywhere in the world are not conducive to farming. Okay, there's very little arable land in these areas. And that is why the Iroquois who got their, the structure of their society, I believe, from the people in the past, formed a confederation, okay? Because the peoples who lived, a part of the confederation of the Iroquois, whatever tribe lived in the mountainous areas, okay, didn't have that arable land, they all needed to cooperate with each other. The people who lived in the western part of New York State grew up. They had 500-acre farms. Some of the Haudenosaunee villages, which the Haudenosaunee or the Iroquois, if you didn't know, okay, had something like 16 square miles of maize growing around their, their um, villages, okay? 500 acre farms without the million dollar machinery that farmers need today to manage these crops, okay? So you're living up in the, in the wooded areas of the mountainous regions where there's very little arable land, okay? You needed the food resources because according to Charles C. Mann in his book 1491, there were millions of people living here. And if there were millions of people living here, these stone walls went up faster than you could possibly think. A hundred times the, what it would take to build the pyramids, okay? All of the adjacent states look just like this, folks, okay? You're talking about the most incredible mega city that ever was on the planet. And nobody's paying attention to it except me and these other people who are at the vanguard of researching this. And we've come to some incredible revelations about this area, okay? You can say what you want about it. Egypt and Rome and Europe and Africa and China, blah, 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 blah. Nothing compares to this, folks. Nothing. Okay? Like I said, if people say, oh, there's 100,000 people living up in this area. Without that 100,000 people, only 20% of the people were capable of building the stone walls. And many of them were involved in different crafts and trades that had nothing to do with this. When the Dutch got here, they weren't interested in farming in these areas because they knew the futility of it. They were mainly focused on the fur trade because that was lucrative. Being a farmer here was loser. Was being a loser, okay? The Dutch government gave up on their settlers because they refused to become farmers. There was no worth at all. Becoming a farmer in these mountainous areas is impossible to grow crops there, 
okay? That's why the Northeast is mostly dairy country. You can grow some crops in the small arable areas of the mountainous region, but you can't do it on a large scale. And that's why the Iroquois created a federation, okay? They shipped the corn to the people who had the timber. The people who timber shipped the timber back to the people who had the corn. The people who had the fish shipped it to the people who had the furs. The people who had the furs shipped it to the people who did the fishing. They needed this confederation in order to survive. They needed the various resources from the various areas. Otherwise, it was impossible to live in these areas. So... Take another look at it again, guys. And if you're a new subscriber, please do look at my series, Debunking the Mainstream History on the Stone Walls. Please do look at my videos of up in the Green Mountains in rural Connecticut, where I take you through the Mallory area there. And it's just a Disneyland of ancient stone constructions, effigies, Manitou heads, stone walls, cairns, uh, earthworks, uh, you name it, mounds, you name it, it's there. If you take a close look at these walls, guys, they just don't make any sense in a colonial context. They're just so convoluted and complex, and in these remote areas where nobody is there today for it, because it's impossible, okay? There weren't any people there in the past either in these remote areas. And the people who lived in those areas for generations know that too. Okay? Like the person who lived in Vermont that commented there. Okay? Like Jimmy. All right? Here in Springfield, Vermont. Okay? And Chuck CFS just showed a video of these stone cairns built in Michigan, I believe. And... You know, they're all part of this society as well. A society that goes back thousands of years that we hardly know anything about. But if you, if you subscribe to my channel, you look at these sites here, these pages on Facebook, Northeast Historical Stone Sites Investigation, Celebrating the Stone Landscapes of New England, you'll find out more about it. And of course, go to Jimmy's channel, The Paleo Mountain Man, Brian Gilliotti, North Country Relics, Dennis D. These are all people who are focusing. Uh, Steve there in Canada, um, I forget his last name as well, who found all the stone pyramids there in Canada and other strange things going on up there, okay? We're talking about an advanced civilization from the ancient, ancient past, folks. And this is just a sample, okay, of what, it, what it's all about, all right? All of the Northeast, all the adjacent states around here looks exactly like this. Thousands upon thousands of miles of stone walls. Barbara DeLong's who was at, you know, was one of the first ones to uh, make this point, along with Jim Vieira, okay, and Hugh Newman, if you like Hugh Newman, okay. There's more like 500,000 miles of stone walls because it doesn't include Canada. It doesn't include Pennsylvania. It doesn't include Ohio, Indiana, Illinois, Michigan, Wisconsin, but all of those states... As we know from the Iroquois, they have relative tribes who speak a language similar to the Iroquois who live in those states. You see, they all inherited their highly advanced, one of the most socially advanced societies of the native peoples in all of the Americas, okay? Not as technically advanced as the, some of the societies in in Central America and South America, but more socially advanced as demonstrated by this confederation, okay? And I go over the mechanics of the federation in many videos on my channel, so please do go to my channel. Please take a look at the playlist there, okay? And in it, you can find the Stonewall Code, Discoveries in, Mount in Vermont. There's a language in the walls, a language similar to the knobs that my friend Phil and my friend Andrew focus on their channels, okay? 
All right, this is uh, something that goes way back in time, folks. And all of the walls in New England are serpents, as I demonstrated through my own research. This is my revelation, my research, my baby. Okay, and I found the serpent head repeated in the stone walls over and over again. And some of the subs that live in those areas have sent me pictures of the stone walls with the identical constructions in them. Folks. And here I am at Mallory. All right, this is me. I'm not a guy who's just sitting behind a computer looking at videos and stuff. Here's me in the field doing the research. Hi guys. Okay, so, but uh, you know, say what you want, but I've done it. Been there, done that. All right. So I'm not just an armchair archaeologist as some guy described me in one of his comments without looking at more than the one video he's looking at all right so please do look at the videos on my channel because look it, it has hardly any views i mean you know these videos should have thousands of views okay just as much as videos on egypt and south america and you know turkey and europe and africa and china and india this deserves much more attention than it's got okay so this is what i wanted to bring to you today in my video all of you new subscribers i want you to go back and look through my videos that concentrate on the stone walls i'm going to put a few links to them at the end of this video watch them and you'll hear all of my arguments against the mainstream history and the revelations that me jimmy and other people have come to about the stone walls in the northeast part of north america this largely ignored and under-researched archaeological site the largest one in the entire world is so gigantic, as Susan Allboy stated, despite my disagreeing with her about many of the other points about the colonists and settlers, she's right about that. Enough man-made stonework to build a hundred pyramids at Giza. All right? Think about it. All right? Think about it. And maybe you'll understand something more about how important this is in the field of archaeology and anthropology and a history that we don't know much about. All right? All right, guys. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. Please hit the like button. I'll be back with a new video which, uh, very soon, if I can. Um, I don't get as much time on the internet anymore as I did in the past, so it's difficult for me to even get to the Facebook pages, so please forgive me, I'm doing my best, and if you enjoyed the video, please hit the like, Bugcat7 signing out, peace.